Triple KO. What's up, everybody? We are back for an- another episode of Triple KO. I am Justin Wong. I'm here with Mr. Matt McMuscles and Mr. Maximilian Dude, who's currently dying. Hi, I'm you know, Triple so- KO. I'll be okay. <laughs> always, he always has a debuff on. Now. Yeah, so still always kidding. Always a debuff. Yeah. But today, you know, I know you, you were mentioning um, there were a lot of comments to talk about, like, Soul Calibur. Um, so we're here to talk about the Soul Calibur series, uh, where the, the soul, the heart burns in your heart or whatever the, the slogan is. <laughs> and I am actually a big noob when it comes to Soul Calibur. And, you know, so you guys might have to take me to some of the stories. And before we even get to Soul Calibur, there was a few games before before they changed the name to Soul Calibur, like like Soul Edge, Soul yeah. Blade. So like, well, let's let's start there. Like, uh, I, I remember <sighs> I played. Was it Soul Edge on Dreamcast? No, nope. I think right. It's a, it, no, no. Play, PlayStation, play, PlayStation, or PlayStation or Arcade. One thing I know that Max day. knows about Soul Blade and Edge is that it has terrible music. Yeah, the one intro of the song is awful. The, the, <laughs> really? But we should just rename this entire thing How It Died, Soul Calibur. Uh, <laughs> I thought the music was good in these like in these no, games. No, or no, unless, be, it, unless be, it leveled up. Don't don't look I'm up the Soul Calibur s- Soul Edge intro. Don't look it up. It's awful. Uh, oh, don't don't look it up. I'm being super sarcastic for the most part. Because aside from aside from Edge of Soul, I don't like remember much of the musical Soul Blade Edge. What I like to ask Max, and he can inform both me and you, is that why do you have any reasoning why they even changed the name from Edge and Blade? Was it just uh, localization Japan and, and America? I, it must have been. I actually don't know. Um, mm. And for anybody that is like curious about this, uh, I'm pretty sure the, the 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 American version is called Soul Blade. I'm pretty Soul sure. Soul Blade, right? I think and in so, Japan, yeah. it's Soul Edge. So this was the arcade version of the first quote unquote Soul Calibur game, and uh, the the PlayStation port, you know, as well. But um, in, it's about as good as the original Tekken is. In comparison mm, to the rest of the series, it's pretty. It's pretty rough. There's some cool ideas in here, but uh, if we're talking about like why the localization was different from one to the other, I could not tell you. Okay, it's, is it kind of like Street Fighter where they just changed the kind? The they might have just changed it for up. the sake of like, I don't like that. Let's name it this. You know, yeah. people don't understand what edges are. <laughs> But things were edgy in like ninety five, ninety six, or like getting there. Yeah, but in in the nineties, we didn't call them edgy. That's true. What do we, it's true. Wait, wait, not what the we, time. What, what do we say? Bef- that's not edgy. What was that? They the, just the were things. Of edge. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They they were just at the time. They were just things. Like you did, they weren't even like, oh, you're being edgy. Like no, you're being a human. That's the way humans yeah. act in the Everyone, 90s. Everyone's mm. default setting was on edgy. Like, so therefore no one was edgy. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Until it got there. All we had wrestlers, to, like, move like away. everything. Yep. Everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was a bit more 97, 98, but we were getting there, right? But I remember Soul Blade, no one ever talked about it. No nope. one ever. Yeah. Like, it existed, nope. Nope. but it was no Tekken at that time. Tekken was, like, blowing up when once Tekken 2 had come out and Soul Blade was a little bit after. Yeah. Or the same year, maybe, even. If you go back and you and you look at it, I think the biggest reason for this is like visually, the game is just sort of rough looking. E- e- even around 97, 98, that's when Tekken 3, you know, is about to exist. And Tekken's already yeah. been around for quite some time. And this game is a lot more technically prowess. They have like an armor system, you know, they have like full 3D movement, they have ring outs, they have uh, weapons that can break things. It's actually kind of like, wow, this is sort of impressive. But uh, it looks like shit, man. Like Soul Edge, Soul Blade, they don't look good. Even in arcades to consoles, they're not really great looking games by comparison to what uh, other companies like Sega is doing at the time. Yeah. It's like, always, you know, I, so it's always the first games. Yeah. Like it was actually it was in the arcades in April of 96. So VF3 is out at this time, you know? Mm. So that's like, yeah, they're, they're, it looks rough compared to vf3 but all i remember like lore wise is that cervantes is the is the big bad of this game and he it's is, all yeah. about he has soul edge and everyone just wants to stop him uh and looking at the character designs it's one of those things where 
when you look at Street Fighter character designs, you're like, oh, Ryu and Ken and Chun Li, like you can still in the future have games with their costumes. People will still like them. Yeah. You go back yeah. to Soul Blade, and it's really, really hard to like, like because they have ornate costumes, but there's they just can't put enough detail on them to make them really shine. Exactly. Versus Caliber. Even in comparison to like main hero character, which is uh, like Siegfried and stuff like that, or uh, Mitsurugi. Yeah, Mitsurugi does not really. He has like kind of a weird costume in this game, dude. Yeah, like, it's like all blue. It's like blue and green or something like that. It's like that's weird. That doesn't really feel like Mitsurugi. Uh, and the same thing for like a lot of the characters. There's a lot of like usage of greens in Soul mm. Edge, Soul Blade, like weird blues and greens, and not like you know poppy Sega blues and greens. So once again, artistically, the game's just sort of off, in my opinion. It looks cool. Some shots are cool, but it, it the game just does not hit the visual prowess that the later games would, would they, which they have like an extreme visual identity. Yeah, and it's also... Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, go ahead, Justin. No, I was saying, like, how many characters did, like, this game have? Was it just only eight Ten? characters? No, there's Ten? a bunch of other, like, hidden slash side characters. In the same way that, oh, like, okay. Tekken 1 or 2, like, you go off the character select menu. Okay. And there's, yeah. like, just a, a shit ton. Uh, characters like, you know, Rock and stuff like that are in there, which is, like, the big dude with the axe if he's not in the core roster. But, yeah, there's there's a ton. But they're, like, in, in ways, yeah. like, 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 the clone characters. But the main cast is something like nine or ten, I think. Ish. Then, yeah. Yeah. Remember, um, um, Arthur. Yes. Uh, uh, so, the, the American uh, samurai American guy. American Mitsurugi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Oh yeah. no. I think it's in the European versions. They were like. Europe is still kind of hesitant about depicting samurais and ninjas and things. Yeah. Because yeah. of a violent like concerns with like it was, weapons it was like that or korea or something like that it was some it was, some yeah. place that was just like yeah we can't have mitsurugi so they got arthur instead which was just like they just changed his hair color to blonde and his eye yeah, color and to like blue. an eye patch oh, wow. and an eye patch yeah he was actually kind of a <laughs> sick looking character to be real like considering he's a clone character it's like yeah you'd expect him to be a lot worse but he's like way cool i think he comes back in some game in some form i he forget does. where he's like a costume i think maybe even in soul Calibur six or something like that like something way like down that. the line that's awesome that's like such a fighting game thing like you know like mortal Kombat ermac becoming a, a thing later on yeah or, or whatever but yeah like everyone was still all about tekken at the time and like i remember a friend of mine renting uh, Soul Blade once and we played it. We're like, that's fine. And then we just kind of moved on from yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a forgettable game, but what, what it is is the what and I'm doing a tech and legacy right now, so I'm able to go back and see this. Um Namco games get all of their success because their games are so feature rich in content, it's nuts. Like casuals mm. carry Tekken uh, one, two, three, four, like oh, these games so hard. Like they're practically made for a casual audience because there's just so many things in them to do. They're actual games, right? And Soul Edge is no different. So it has yeah. like, you know, I, I think it has a Chronicle of Soul mode where like you you work, travel around and, you know, uh, Edge go across uh, the map. I think it was Edge Master. Was it called Edge Master in this? Yeah, I or something, so. something like that. And, you know, I haven't played through all of these extensively, but Soul Edge on console is is one of those games too, where it's just like, oh yeah, Bandai Namco gets it. Like they're not just arcade ports. There's like the arcade version, which is bare bones, and then here's the console version, which is the actual real game. So mm. you know, a ton of people buy it as a result. You know, I was really interested. In, like I'm looking at some Soul Blade footage, and I didn't know they had a a guard system, a visible guard system, yes. compared to more of the recent Soul Calibers, where it's more of like the the, the color of the blocks. Yeah. So yeah, I think that was pretty interesting. And this I'm surprised one, they, they took that like, out. There was like a braking system in in yeah, this right? game and stuff. And that that was kind of frequent for, for games in the nineties, like Samurai Showdown also hovered around that yeah. for a bit too. Yeah. Where you can break their weapons and stuff like that. So that was it was kind of a popular concept. But this like was the, the only Shido game. As well. This was the only game they would ever do that in. Yeah, yeah that I was I'm so. actually surprised they they took that out. Yeah, so it came out initially in arcade nineteen ninety five. So it's yeah. much younger than even I thought it was. Um, and then I, after uh, that, there was some sequel. I, I don't I don't think it's that important. Yeah, Maybe we can ignore Soul Calibur. It's not that good. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but Soul Calibur 2, that's the one that everyone, you know, swears up and down on and talks about that this is the greatest Soul Calibur or at least 
top two of the greatest Soul Calibur games ever came out. Yeah, yeah. Soul Calibur two is like the pinnacle. Soul Calibur one is the game that sets them up for that because mm -hmm. it definitely what, set up. From from what I remember, Soul Calibur one was the only fighting game ever to be nominated for Game of the Year throughout several so. publications in 1999. Wow. Yeah, it's the first fighting game ever where it's like, wait a minute, Game of the Year is going to Soul Calibur? Like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. I I don't think you can do it anymore because GameRankings.com like, closed down or got folded into whatever. Yeah. I don't think this is true if you look on Metacritic nowadays, but for years, you go into to GameRankings.com, put in most uh, well-reviewed games of all time, and I distinctly Soul remember Calibur seeing one. Soul Calibur at like one or two or three. It was something crazy high. Like had like ninety eight percent reviews yep. or something. I, I mean, for like, the Dreamcast version. But th this is the, and that's the only version that existed. Like, but the, I mean, sorry, the to the arcade version <clears throat> was was around, but it was not the same game. <clears throat> yeah. Soul Calibur One on Dreamcast was like a complete anomaly. It it, it had so mm -hmm. much content. It looked friggin' amazing. I mean, I think the visuals carry probably carried it way further than anyone would like to admit. I because so. it was just one of the best looking games of all time. It was better looking than arcade games, like period. So I think Soul Calibur 1 is like a legendary game in this in the entire franchise. Just absolutely legendary. Mm -hmm. And I was there for day one when it Me came too. out. And I dude, yeah, like everybody anybody that had that had a Dreamcast in somewhere close to nine nine ninety nine, <laughs> they'll tell you that that system, that game are just like entwined. They're amazing. Ah, uh, like, see, that's the one I was confused. That's the one I played on Dreamcast. Yes. Yeah, I was but like, you're, yeah, I remember I played on Dreamcast. Yeah. But but you're still not wrong when you said, like, Soul Calibur 2 is still, like, you know, kind of yeah. considered the upper echelon, but it's, like, would not exist without Soul Calibur 1 being a Dreamcast exclusive, and like Max said, on the 999 stuff, you would see, like, Killick in the renders of all the characters, like, you know, palling yeah. around or whatever, or yeah. the, their marketing campaign. Like, imagine that. It's like Nintendo is like, here's our new uh, system, or Sony's like, here's our new system. And in the market material, you see Scorpion or Ryu or whoever it is. Yeah. Like, a fighting game uh, character placed that prominently, but, like, Soul Calibur. Because unlike Blade, when even in the arcades a little bit, like certainly more because when I'd go to the, my local arcade, everyone was playing soul caliber. But when that hit the dreamcast, it was like everyone I knew, even people that did yep. not own dreamcast. They're like, I want to play that soul caliber yep. game. Oh, did you see that? It was over at a friend's house. Oh, did you see this chick named Ivy? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know, Ivy, which, which is still relevant today. <laughs> yeah. And, and she's, it's, she's, she's still available. The, the direct comparison was to what, what else was happening in the industry at the time, you know? Like, at, at that time, Virtual Fighter 3 was the best that we had visually. And then you also had, like, Tekken 3, right? Now, Tekken yeah. Tag wasn't even really a thing yet. Not yet. So, mm -hmm. uh, just from... And w we were... This is around Mortal Kombat 4 as well. So this is what fighting games looked like, right? Mm -hmm. Mortal Kombat 4, Tekken 3, Virtual Fighter 3. Good-looking games in their own. Soul Calibur is on this like giant leap, right? It's like a completely different weight class when it comes to just visuals and eye popping, yeah. uh, eye popping like you know just raw graphics. It's mind blowing looking. So, yeah, I also think this is the beginning of the death of arcades. This is like the 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 first step of the death Absolutely. of arcades is Soul Calibur on Dreamcast, and it's because it looks so much better than the arcade version does. It makes the arcade version look like shit. So, uh, as much as I love it. That I like, I don't have to go to arcades anymore and spend money in arcades. I love it. This is what I've wanted for so long. Oh no! Why am I reaping what I'm sowing? Oh no! Because <laughs> because Soul Calibur was still on Namco System Twelve, which is very PlayStation PS1. centric. So yeah. you move that over to the Dreamcast. It's like no way we're not gonna make huge improvements, make all the characters look better, more rounded. Yeah. And like I think did Blade have the announcer? Did Blade have the same like? The Soul Still Burns announcer or was it like a little paired back? Do you remember? Because I think Blade had started. something. Yeah, I think the something. presentation throughout all the games is pretty similar. So mm -hmm. there's like a guy, "Welcome back, you piece of shit." Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when sound wise, like music wise, Soul Calibur is also really big. Oh my god, like, much bigger than Blade. So it's a like, huge, huge improvement. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sound, okay, okay. Sound, sound is 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 insane, and there's so much of it because there's so many characters in Soul Calibur One, dude. Like we would go on and compare this to even Soul Calibur Six, 
and there's more characters in Soul Calibur 1 than there was at the start of Soul Calibur 6. It's crazy, oh, wow. man, how, how feature-rich so. this game is. Yeah, wow, and, okay. And, and like, lore-wise, it was cool. I, w I, I know this isn't, like, feasible, but it was like, let's name the next game based on the other sword, the yeah. twin sword to the soul edge. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. But then you can't have... You can't make up more and more swords. Yeah. So after that, it just became Soul Calibur. But they could have also done really confusing releases, like Soul Edge, then yeah. Soul Calibur, then Soul Edge 2, then yeah. go back to Soul Calibur. <laughs> that would have been weird. <laughs> like, I mean, and, and you forget that, that like, yeah, Soul Edge is the, the giant meat sword that yeah. Siegfried gets that turns him into Nightmare. And Soul mm -hmm. Calibur is the, the long, elephant sort of like Chinese straight sword that Shang Shua gets uh, around Soul Calibur 1, right? And then, you know, it's a big, big part of the story in Soul Calibur 2. And then it becomes like a giant crystal sword at some point. It's called these, yeah, like, I don't know. That's Soul Calibur 3. Yeah, I think so. I, think, I can't yeah. remember. Or Soul Calibur 4. I actually, dude, I'm glad we didn't talk about this in lore or anything like that because when it comes to actual Soul Calibur lore, I don't know what the shit is going on, dude. <laughs> uh, like these, these Bandai Namco games, man, I don't know what the hell is happening story wise. I, I think up until 3, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's easily fo followable. It's like, uh, I, I think Siegfried, no, Nightmare's the boss of Soul Calibur. Yes, yes, that's right. No, oh, it's not Cervantes? No, no, I'm no, sorry. he's playable. Uh, Cervantes he's playable. is a close to last boss. It's Inferno. Okay. It uh, is Inferno on Soul Calibur. I thought he was in Soul Calibur 2. Um, let me go back and check. There is yeah, a big fire, look. dude. Yeah, which I think would be Inferno. Um, I don't know. Sometimes it might not even say when you're looking up something. Um, but yeah, like the story was all like, especially the arcade versions was always kind of like hinted at like, oh, you, you know that there's a big bad at the end. So it was easy enough to, to go through that. But when you had the arcade versions, uh, sorry, the home versions that had like the RPG modes, edge master and stuff, that's where like more stuff can be mined out of there. But if you didn't play those modes, you might not know. Because yeah. the game doesn't expressly tell you unless you get, um, like, an ending. And then we move from, like, the endings being CGI to, like, the scrolls that just kind of imply. Like the artwork? Yeah, the yeah. artwork, which yeah. I, I liked at the same time. They started doing them way too far into the timeline. Like, we're on 360 and then we're on PS4 and Xbox One. We're still doing the scroll thing. But that might be more of a budget issue. As we go on, budget issues hit Soul Calibur games really hard unfortunately, unfortunately yeah but then you have um like because soul copper one was such a huge success and you were saying that it's like it, it got nominated for game of the year right now how how did uh soul caliber 2 like um i guess stayed on that same level like well, did it still get that same praise the same the same love the same like oh my god this is better than soul caliber one I, I mean, I, it's better. It, it is it is better, but what it lacks is the newness, right? Soul Calibur oh, like, was like okay. this this new, fresh thing, different from the previous game. All Soul Calibur 2 was was just Soul Calibur 1, but better, right? It was just like, oh, it's everything we love about the, oh, the first game. It just plays better, oh, and there's more stuff. Yeah. So it seems like it was like a like a patch update type of thing. No, it it, no, no, it, it was it was a true more sequel. It was definitely okay. a true sequel. It the the difference is that what what happens? It's like. Uh, I think the the best comparison I could say is like right now is like the Spider-Man PS4 game compared to Spider-Man mm -hmm. 2 on PS5. Like they're clearly games that inspire from each other and clearly Spider-Man, you know, PS5 is way better. And there's like just yeah. more stuff to do and it's like, you know, actually a better game. But it lacks like the punch of it being a new thing that was super exciting back in like 2018 when Spider-Man came out for the first time. It sort of lacks that like, whoa, like damn, this has no, never been this this kind of game like this or something like that. And also something we kind of skipped over that Caliber introduced and made it so easy was eight-way movement ah, around okay. around the characters, which introduced like both the vertical and the horizontal attacks. I I, I honestly don't remember if eight-way movement was in Blade, but if it was, it was it definitely clunkier. Yeah, right? if, if, if it, it was there, so. it was probably there in a very a minor fashion, like you said, right. because that the the very pristine g gameplay control doesn't really show up until Soul Calibur One. Yeah, and Soul Calibur One isn't the fastest Soul Calibur by any means, but it is definitely responsive as shit. So mm -hmm. it, it's like a great feeling game to play, 
And that brings us to Soul Calibur 2, which is like the fastest the series would ever get. Um, and this game is just wild, right? It's 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 kind of unhinged in terms of like gameplay expansion. Um, and the, the, the first impression we have of it is the arcade because it comes out in arcades number one first. And this is when the arcade release has like a year between the arcade yeah. and console release. So we're just playing this, the shit out of this game in arcades. Um, and the cool part is that it's the first arcade game I remember playing that had like a mode that wasn't just a yep. versus mode. They had a like a world tour mode yeah, where like conquest mode. Type yeah, of thing. the, the conquest yes. mode where you can actually build up factions in certain areas like red flag, yellow flag, blue yep. flag. And oh. then and then win against the other flags. I don't think anything ever happened, but like you can make your own like character and then join a faction and then continue forward. And the people you beat, you could just like farm points for your team. Yeah, um, it's, it's 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 literally you just like you choose the red flag and you want to conquer the whole like continent with mm -hmm. like red flags like, against the yellow and blues and you fight like uh like PC like uh AI battles like you fight against the the CPU and stuff right and if you beat them you take their their territory over. The crazy part about that mode <laughs> was that I because this is the game that this is the first time I seen Soul Calibur in the arcade. We didn't have Soul Calibur one in Chinatown Fair. We just had Soul Calibur two. And you would just see people play this conquest mode and everybody else is just waiting for their turn. Yep. And it's and I'm like, they could wait for like 30, 40 minutes. And they're just literally waiting for 30, 40 minutes before the guy finishes playing or he finally loses. So the person um, behind them yeah. can like also catch up their region yep. to that person yep. and the progress they made. Yeah. Yeah, it's and that was so interesting to do in the arcade because you would think in terms of time, you don't make that much money. From a Soul Calibur two machine because of that art the the conquest mode available. Yeah. yeah. So mm. so that was a that it felt like uh Gauntlet Legends, but in a fighting game, pretty much. Yeah, a little um, bit. But you last you last for a really, really long time. And there's no co op or anything like that. Yeah, it's no co op. Because now that you guys are mentioning this, it's like I don't even remember if I played Soul Calibur two in arcades. I don't remember my arcade getting it or that arcade closed down, I think, by that time and the backup arcade didn't didn't get it like they were really slow in fighting games at that time because this is like 2002 now yeah. and i don't remember because you're 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 talking about conquest mode i have the vaguest memory of this but i don't remember actually playing it yeah, yeah. It sounds cool though it, it so caliber 2 popped off super hard like in arcades like i the, the, I, I was that was like one of like my games like early on right so i was like the the, the local the region to beat was like we got to take out max's region it's doing too good or some weird shit like that <laughs> so uh <coughs> it was fun it's just a great game in arcades yeah there, there's there's one thing i want to talk about when you're looking at the roster of this and the new characters they added were uh rafael uh talim and uh cassandra and i remember at the time seeing cassandra and going what the hell is this why are we new generationing the game already? Yeah. Like oh. that. I remember going like, that's weird that there's like a little sister character that's very close to the other characters. So And I was like, okay, I'll, that's fine. If anyone wants to pick her, I'll just stick with Sophia. And Soul Calibur would run into this problem pretty hard down the line with another game where they, they went way too hard in that direction. But I remember thinking that's fine. Like I, don't dislike the character, but I just remember like I I'd rather take the older, cooler version myself. Yeah. Um, but aside from that, aside from that, I remember waking up one morning and logging on to IGN IGN.com and seeing this story that just had Link's face on it and the Soul Calibur logo and literally losing my mind yeah because at this point i was foolishly a gamecube only warrior I was like, <laughs> ps2 sucks it has no games unlike the gamecube yeah <laughs> with its almost zero fighting games um but i was just such a gamecube warrior it was only until metal gear solid 3 came out where i was like oh, i'm getting a fucking ps2 i don't care at this point i don't want to miss that um but i remember being so hyped for link and being hey hachi who the fuck <laughs> want to play hey hachi yeah. in a soul Cal that's so <clears throat> lame spawn yeah. he's so lame well now <laughs> th then he was like 
the huge Spawn mark back in the day. But I was like, Spawn? Who the fuck cares about Spawn? Oh my God, it's Link. I just couldn't believe it. And to this day, I still think he's like, you know, the best of those three characters. Just has too many weapons, too many options. But I could not believe that happened. And I really think that's like where Soul Calibur also started to get this reputation from then on out. Like, yeah. you have to keep topping this. Yeah. And it seesaws between games a little bit, especially in Soul Calibur 3, where it's like, well, now we, now we're not doing that anymore. And then we'll go back to it because we realized that was kind of a mistake. Yeah. So the guest characters were like a huge influence. Like I'd, I'd say it's like the biggest influence uh, guest characters had on a fighting game ever for that one moment, for that one game. Yeah. It was like for so many because it divided lines even more. Each game got its own box art with its yeah, own color that was cool. scheme. I remember that. That was super yeah. cool. That was marketing yeah. genius, really. That was really cool. Yeah, and, and Link ends up going to be, like, the, the biggest casual bait for a fighting game, like, ever it, at oh, the time. The GameCube Free. version outsold the PS2 version because of it, amazingly. Yep. The, and the, the GameCube PS2 did not have that many had, sales. Yeah. Uh, the, the PS2 uh, was Heiachi, right? Yes. Uh, and yeah. w where was Spawn from? Where did Spawn go? Xbox, Xbox. version alone. Because he's oh, green. Xbox. He's got okay. green in his eyes. Is it, is it green blood or whatever? Yeah. I forgot Xbox was out at this time, actually. I was like, what? How like... dare you? Because <laughs> I never had an original Xbox. I was just always a PlayStation warrior. Or that this is where you got the best ports of SNK games on the Xbox for a couple of years. <laughs> you oh, know, you, you got mean, Samurai mean... Showdown 5 on the Xbox, I think. Oh, I thought you were talking about the when, when people hacked their Xboxes to play all these other games. Oh, you mean the dank box? Dank box. The dank box. That's 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 how I got introduced to the Xbox. Was a dank Dude, box. Dude, I, I I think Max has one, but I had this dank I box. that had like a big doom demon on the face, <laughs> and he was like, I, 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 like yeah. Uh, but but when you play a spawn, they like you know they went out of their way though. Here's Keith David reprising his role as the character that's you know yeah. still in MK11. But you play as him, and he's kind of lame and all on. Like he yeah. has this tons of potential. But yeah, Spawn just, sucks. Yeah, he just has his axe, oh, and really? that's it. So weirdly enough, like like Spawn sort of has like a battle axe in medieval Spawn. If we want to talk about like actually Spawn characters, but he has like a yeah. large battle axe or something like that, right? Um, in this game, he gets this like little axe. It was little axe, like a little handheld, like you know, one handed, like like double sided axe, and he sort of like. Will it, like tosses it around with like you know absolute a uh, delicious flavor like he's like putting on a show for you or some shit it's like this does not really feel like oh. it's clearly like a move Doesn't. set of some other character that they had that they never really fully realized because it like Spawn does actually do stuff where he like flies and shoots and you know does some cool things but outside of that he's like throwing it up and flipping it behind his back and that posing and it's like. There is something definitely missing here of of the connection between this spawn and the spawn from the comics. This is not one to one. And yeah. they also go fans would be like, where the hell is his cape? Where's Spawn's cape? Namco, where's Spawn's cape? And they're like, Oh, his cape turned into his axe. That this what? cape metamorphosized into an so axe. he can use the axe. Because Spawn doesn't have regular Al Simmons modern time spawn. I Max how did they not just go, let's put medieval spawn into the game? I don't fucking know, Matthew. It was the thing I said when I was like, like, like 19, 20 years old when this came out. I was like, what like, the hell? Because medieval spawn has cool armor. He has a big berserk, like yep. long sword. It would have been so perfect. He could have been like, like, like rock, but a little bit different. Yep. I bet Todd McFarlane was like, no, it's got to be, it's got to be regular. Spawn. And I think that's the visual difference is that like medieval spawn is like a red, white and blue sort of completely different looking of spawn like he's kind mm. of visually different while like the, yeah, the a lot of blue the very harsh you know black white red spawn which is the mega visual identity of this character at the time after issue 25 he's because he's got his big boot spawn as well for anybody that, mm -hmm. if i don't sound like a crazy person no, uh, no no every time you say big boot spawn i just nod my head I was you know like, exactly, I know exactly what i'm talking about talking. so it's big boot spawn uh, and, and yeah it looks yeah. just like he came right out of the comics or something like that so i don't know what dude. If it's, I it's, said a, it's a weird decision what if I said to you, Spawn with shoelace tying up his face? I know exactly what you're talking about. 
<laughs> and that isn't <laughs> that version. Awesome. No, no, no. That version's not in the game as, as costume too. No, it's not. It's they not, just it's have not. meat face spawn. That, that's it. Yeah. Um, now that I mentioned Todd McFarlane, we, we are like 40, 45 episodes of Triple KO. It's been all been leading up to this. Do we get to talk about Necrid now? We can talk Do about we? <laughs> This character's so fucking weird, dude. I, I remember even so, looking at him back in the day. I'm like, that character's lame as shit. Todd came up you, with this? Why is he so you, lame? What do you know about Necrid, Justin? Um, He sounds like a necromancer. Okay. Do you okay. know what color Necrid's skin is? Um, Could you take a guess? Take a guess. <laughs> White. No. No. He looks like Shrek. Shrek. Like for like the like pick like Pixar Shrek. So yeah. so Google like Google Necrid. Cause I bet you if you Google Necrid now you'll be like, oh Yeah, Google no, Necrid, N E C R I D, and you'll just get an immediate right. visual like, you know, ass blast to the face. What what game what game was he in? This Soul, Soul Calibur 2. 2. It was part of Todd McFarlane's deal. If you can have Spawn, but you have to let me design my own original OC. Yeah. And this original OC is in all three versions, GameCube, PS2, and Xbox, and he never shows up ever again. And yeah, his moveset is lame as shit. He's a clone character. Yeah, he's he? just, oh. he's, he's, he's essentially, uh, he's not like a Moku Jin, uh, but he's an amalgamation. So he's kind of yeah. like, uh, what's would be the best comparison? Like a I Seth? thought it was Inferno. It's kind of like Seth. Yeah, Dural like or Seth. Seth. So Fighter, they, right? they just he just pickpockets yeah, Seth, like Seth. something from Ivy, something from Siegfried, something from this character. He's just like a, a chunk of the whole roster with very few things that are unique to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I he never, just looks. What the fuck is with the thing on his chest, Matt? Tell me, Matt. What's the lore behind the thing on his chest? That's his core. Uh, you know, his the, heart, the, his core. I designed this element of Necrid to have this cool thing on his chest because it looks cool. I'm Todd McFarlane. No, that's, you, that, what, that's the my reason. My name's Todd McFarlane. His voice is much more nasally than that. Come on. It, it is. Okay, it is, but I'm doing HBO Spawn animated that's series true. at the start where he, he <laughs> pretends to be all cool. Where he walks behind a curtain. Have you ever watched your kid and wife die in front of you? No. Well, that's what happened to Spawn. <laughs> and he's but, going through a lot right now. Please choose Necrid to be your main in Soul Calibur 2. <laughs> yeah. What's up, everybody? We want to give a big shout out to today's sponsor of Triple KO, HelloFresh. You guys already know HelloFresh is all about eating good, saving money, and stressing less because you don't even need to go to the supermarket because they want, they want to make sure that the food, the ingredients are delivered straight to your door. And guess what? We are at 20 24 guys 2024 so we have to you know it's that time it's that time to save money guys it's that time to eat better <laughs> and it's also that time to avoid these supermarkets right because hello fresh is here and it has the answer to all three with fresh ingredients and chef crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door we are all busy people we got to make this content we got to stream we got to write scripts <laughs> gotta we got, grind. We don't got, yeah we don't got time to go to the grocery store right so i'm just so curious max do you have any personal experience with hellofresh yeah uh again hellofresh has been uh, a frequent sponsor on my own personal channels as well as the the triple ko podcast for quite some time and for people that are unfamiliar this isn't like a already prepared meal sent to your door this is to sort of assist you in starting up how to learn how to cook so they send you the ingredients they send you the plan they send you an entire like guided layout if this was a fighting game tutorial it'd be one of the <laughs> best tutorials there is because they're going to make you uh they're going to give you the tools to make a delicious meal and guide you through it so that's what's great about HelloFresh. If you're looking to sort of become a chef or become a cook or at least make something with your hands in some way and make it delicious, uh, this is the best way to start. Right. And because of that, obviously, they have, like, like Max said, there are so many options, 45 dinner options, calorie smart and protein smart recipes each week. It never gets boring. And the best part is if you have a subscription active, you get free breakfast, literally. So it's technically free breakfast for life. So HelloFresh wants to make sure that breakfast is the most important meal of the day for you. And they agree, right? So they're giving away all subscribers free breakfast for life. So go to HelloFresh.com slash TKO free and use code TKO free for free breakfast for life. 
one breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash TKO free with code TKO free. And don't forget, guys, HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. So I, I got a I got a Soul Calibur two story. Um, this was Ooh. like the second or third game I ever imported from the great island of Japan, the great nation yeah. of Japan. And uh, that's, the, the, that's the where first we get game, our games. First game Play was Asia. Uh, X Men versus Street Fighter on like Saturn. Okay. I got a copy of that way oh, back in the day. Not, and, not that version. Yeah, that's the best version. Hey, I was the, I was the old, hey, we we got a, what we what we could get. And then I got a DDR second mix on Dreamcast. Okay. I imported that from a store, actually. Believe it or not, in, this was a much different era. In Santa Monica, California, there was a Japanese import video game store oh, down awesome. like Wil Wilshire Boulevard or something like that that I used to frequent. And they had a dance pad and DDR second mix. I bought that shit. And I also imported Dead or Alive 2. Uh, but more importantly, a few years later, me and my friends are like, dude, like... We could import it. I'm like, what? Because we all are just obsessed with Soul Calibur 2. Everyone's just obsessed with this game. It's like the ultimate fighting game ever, right? We're like, no way. So we could get it like now. They're like, yeah, it's coming out in Japan in like six months. We're like, what? No way. So uh, <laughs> we're all, we all realize we can buy the GameCube version early. So we go to a little website called Lick Sang. Lick Sang! Uh, yep. And uh, on Lick Sang, we all imported. We all got our copies at the same time. I still have it, like the little mini GameCube Soul Calibur 2. And this is where like the majority of the, the FGC at the time would go uh, to get Soul Calibur early. Right? So... Uh, yeah, and it was amazing. We bought like a little Pelican converter for PlayStation controllers to work on GameCube, and we were just having a friggin' time of our lives, man. It was the it was amazing. Mm, God, I was like, it's either gonna be Play Asia or Lick Sang. Lick Sang. I, I never heard Play Asia was around. I don't think it was either. Now yeah. that you mention it, <laughs> um, lore wise, because we should touch upon it. Nightmare gets defeated in Soul Calibur, and then it's like. Three, four years later, the uh, Soul Edge burst into different fragments and everyone or a bunch of characters like got like a fragment. Get a chunk of it. it. Yeah. Get mm -hmm. a chunk. And then it's it's a fight Inferno at the end. And then the, the, it, the sword gets reformed. And I think in Soul Edge mode where this is the Soul Edge mode uh, where I play the shit out of it, where you could get a Soul Edge version of your weapon when you started playing and collecting all the weapons that you could get in the game, all the different skins essentially. Yeah. And everyone had like the gross meat. So you could get like Killick's staff or Mitsurugi's sword or even Ivy's uh, uh, chain link sword and everything. And I, I was, I have not played that mode in like at least a decade or more. I should absolutely. Mm. And it sucks because I believe the Soul Calibur 2 is the Soul Calibur 2 HD. Does that have that mode? That was released on PS3 and 360, or was it just a weird amalgamated arcade port? No, it was it was more the console versions. It, it was? I think okay. it was based technically on the PS2 version. So yeah, and they okay. just brought in like the spawn assets and stuff like that because it starts off with Heihachi. Yeah, I, I'm I'm fairly sure it it has all okay. like that the, the the extra modes. So all the goofy weapons and all that kind of shit. Like you know, you slap somebody with like a, a like a, a fly swatter, you know, yeah, that yeah. makes a bonk like noise. Like all that shit is definitely in HD online. Okay, okay, I couldn't remember because I I've only played that version a couple times and I never investigated a lot. An, an actual actually, decent port, pretty pretty good port at the time. Okay, because yeah. I was playing Soul Calibur HD for a while because that looked so cool. And Another cool I, port, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. I think we've talked about this before uh, with Namco specifically. Why no Tekken collection? Why no yeah. Soul Calibur collection? So I'm, like, there's I'm, never a collection. I'm talking about that collection. right now a lot in the Tekken legacy. How like these games are just never preserved. Like, and for some reason, Tekken Tag is the only version of of the the Tekken games in the series that get three different versions, like arcade, PS2, and then HD version ten years later. Mm -hmm. um, Soul Calibur is the same way. So Soul Calibur 1 gets Soul Calibur Arcade, Soul Calibur Dreamcast, very different games. And then 10 plus years later, out on Xbox, almost exclusively, I think, uh, Soul Calibur HD. And mm -hmm. it's great. Not available anymore, mind you. Soul Calibur 2, also unavailable anymore. You can't, I don't think these games are purchasable 
Uh, they were they were oh, removed wow. from the market. Okay. So if you have them on your Xbox or something, it's a, they're amazing. They're 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 genuinely like you have rare games on there. But this is a problem with Bandai Namco in general. So if you want to go back and play Tekken Three, like how the hell do you do it? You need old hardware or you need emulation. If you want to talk about like actual ways without doing it without like emulating, right? And emulation is just the answer for everything now. But if you want like, hey, I'd like to go buy it, right? I'd like to go own it. What are you gonna do? You got to go buy a PS One and a copy of the game or a PS Two. That's it. So the same thing applies to Soul Calibur, where if you want to go play Soul Edge, you just need a PS1, man. If you, want, if you need uh, a, a copy of Soul Calibur 3, you got to go buy a PS2 and a copy of Soul Calibur 3. It's just the way it is. Yeah. And it sucks. It, it genuinely... Yeah, that's unfortunate. It, it genuinely sucks. And it sucks even more that, well, we got 1 and 2, which are kind of the versions that people would probably want to play the most now, but they got removed. They're off the market. And like you could, like I don't know if they ever approached them or anything. But to be fair, it's like the Wii U was out at this time when with the H uh, Soul Calibur Two HD port came out. But it's like they didn't want to support the Wii U at that point. I don't think. I think maybe yeah, Tekken we, Tag Two had come out. I, I I remember asking Harada about that specifically because I was at the Comic Con that it happened at in in 2014, and th these guys have been nice to me for so long. So it's like 10 years now they would even talk to me, right? Um, so that was like the biggest announcement of Comic-Con at the time was that Soul Calibur 2 is coming back and it's like, holy shit. And I remember asking them after a panel, uh, specifically about it. And he's like, don't ask. I'm like, what about the GameCube version? He's like, no, don't ask. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit. Okay. So that's just not happening. It's off. It's off the table. Uh, this is before he finished that thing off by for shit. Don't ask for like, shit. <laughs> yeah, this is the prequel. <laughs> Later on, I would actually bug Harada and Michael Murray like 2017 2018 about like Tekken collection type stuff and the the only sort of forward progressing answer I would get uh is licensing issues is that most of Soul Calibur games are tied up in licensing to weird characters as well as Tekken 3 with Gone you know that kind of stuff also weirdly enough licensing issues with music so really some some portion of the music in these games it's weird because tekken music is all in tekken in, in tekken 8 right now eight. like the yeah, jukebox tekken eight, yep. but things like that are are kind of muddy back in the 90s and the early 2000s with how they how they were distributed like how the game was distributed who owns the rights who gets paid for stuff like that you know all the the business side of the industry apparently that might be what's holding up bandai namco from just putting out collections versus 2d games that didn't really have that problem exactly. they didn't have licensed music or yep. images or stuff that they like can you re-release street fighter ex3 because there's pictures of mr t in the game probably not and and again <laughs> what what are the the games that capcom has been frequently re-releasing over and over again it's just the 2d games capcom not never re-releases yeah. anything of their 3d library like anything that has any fucking 3d elements in it at all so going back to like Naomi MVC2, CVS2, those count, right? Also mm -hmm. Street Fighter EX, Star Gladiator, uh, fucking Project Rival Justice, schools. Rival Schools. Yeah. Like all these games are essentially like stuck. And it's it's funny how like the 2D games are always okay, but for some reason the 3D games, uh-uh, big problems, right? You get an MVC2 port in 2009 and that's it. Shut up. And then we'll take it away from you. Uh, the same thing with Soul Calibur. You get this, you know, 2014, we'll take it away from you a few years, few years later. All the more bizarre that Tekken 5 has the first three arcade versions of yep. Tekken. If they just re-release Tekken 5 again, like as a... Oh my. Because we, we yeah. just got, what, those random ports of Soul Calibur Broken Destiny on PS4 yeah, that was and very PS5? Weird. That and was... if, you, if you just release Tekken 5, the, the PS2 version of Tekken 5, you already have three Tekkens in there, at yep. least. And the, yep. the, 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 the cool part about it, and I just went through this, uh, is that Tekken 5, Tekken 1, 2, and 3 on it, and it's arcade history. So it's quite literally just the arcade versions, not the console versions, of Tekken 1, 2, and 3. And it, it has some... It, it's unique because those versions were never actually released. Right? They, they mm -hmm. are... They are like the, the updated versions of like Tekken 2, like version B or something like that. So, I mean, that's that's cool. That, that's what goes on to make Tekken 5 one of the most feature rich Tekken games like ever is that, oh, we just they shoved in the arcade versions of the old Tekken games in joy. It's like, holy crap, dude, that's insane. So, yeah, it's it's a it, it's a big problem. Bandai Namco like has this issue with the Tekken and the Soul Calibur series that still is not rectified to this day where people would love to own these games in some way but it just doesn't exist. Yeah, it seems kind of tough. 
right when you mentioned that because they did such a good job with the guest characters from two and was it four four had guest characters as well too right yeah they every game back. from this point forward would have guests outside of three three yeah three like not that like you were saying like not many people so i don't remember three at all yeah uh so just to sort of culminize because i was a relatively like competitive soul caliber 2 player I, was, I just played a very lot of it against very people that are very good in arcades and i would go to travel to arcades here and there to try to find better competition and shit um soul caliber 2 was just beloved people just loved it yeah. right it was it was a game where even if you could there were clear top tiers in it but you could play with characters that weren't as good and still do well like you could it's it's it was just a a wild game where everything tracked right for some reason it was just impossible to move away from shit even though you had so much mobility it was fast as shit uh yeah. people loved it it was such, such a great game to watch mm -hmm. soul caliber 3 comes wait, out go ahead wait soul caliber 3 did have people have told us about this oh yeah it oh did really have a guest character in oh. create a soul yeah there were parts of cosmos from xeno saga yeah it's well and you can make her it's a create Does that a really count though? create a character parts yeah 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 so so soul caliber 3 comes out and i remember being crazy hyped for this fucking game dude i was like oh my uh -huh. god here we go it's gonna happen i was the i was the opposite really yeah, because the, the guest characters hyped me up so much and seeing oh, okay. that there's zero. And they did have a PS2 at this point. So I like I could play it. Yeah. But I was yeah. just like, oh, like, really? Okay. Yeah. That being said, Zaz uh, Zazalamel, Tira, and, and Setsuka are like, like, those are some of the best, like, three, like, most balanced three newcomers, like, I've yeah. ever seen, where it's like, all three of these are bangers. Are cool. I want them to be in every game. So, like, I, big ups to that. I remember being really excited about it. No, no, like, newcomer guest characters, I guess, was kind of disappointing to me, but I remember reading in magazines and stuff that, oh, they're, like, revamping a lot of the characters in the game, giving them a bunch of new moves and, you know, really reevaluating, like, how they play. So, I think, gameplay-wise, we, we play Soul Calibur 2 for a long time. I'm just really excited for that. It's like, whoa, we're going to get an actual new game from this. This is going to be so sick because Soul Calibur 1 and Soul Calibur 2 share a lot, like, moveset-wise for the characters. It's just two moves blitz, like, blindingly fast. So, long story short, 3 is a beautiful game. It's, like, the most feature-rich Soul Calibur game ever. It has, like, an RPG mode. It has, like, a real-time strategy mode. It has yep. so much shit in it. It's just, it's just the most feature-rich shit ever. But it kind of doesn't sell that great. Because it loses the big casual appeal. Also, it loses its hardcore audience because the game is slower. Uh, it, oh. it goes down to kind of the speed of Soul Calibur 1. And it's fucked. The whole game is fucked. There is a glitch in the game that oh, yeah. every character can do, sort of akin to... Uh, Justin will know this. The CVS2 roll cancel. Oh, roll cancel. Sort of similar like this. The the roll cancel in CVS2 is a great bug because it can make bad characters actually good. a bit better. It makes yeah. the top tiers really good too, but it sort of evens out the roster. So it's a, it's an amazing glitch. Soul Calibur 3 has a similar bug that kind of allows you to make everything safe from what I remember. I'd have to look up what the, the name of it is because I, I didn't even know this because I didn't play the game that much. Um, it's got a bug that allows you to like almost cancel the recovery of like everything, right? Oh, so it yeah. fucks the whole game up and it f as a result It doesn't really make the bad characters better. It just makes the really good characters really good So the game is literally fucked uh, And competitively everybody hates it. Nobody likes it. So just nobody I casuals aren't playing it and the hardcores are not playing it yeah, I can imagine that because, like, um, I'm just thinking about like my experience with Soul Calibur is usually when I go ever go whenever I go to Evo, right? And Evo had Soul Calibur two for 2003 and 2004. Yes. And then the next Soul Calibur in Evo was Soul Calibur four, yes. three, which is not exi not existed. Really? Okay. Yeah, at Evo whatsoever. And I guess that makes sense. I didn't know that glitch was a thing, and it makes sense why they didn't include it. Because I guess like everybody would just play the same character who can abuse the glitch the best yep. at that point. That there was yeah. also like a um, I never ran into this, but I remember people saying that there was like also a huge uh, save data corruption bug in Soul Calibur Three. Yeah, and that was I always forget about memory, that. You did stuff on the memory card, and it it just boinked everything. Yeah, it like would just it delete everything. all of your progress, all of the, your unlock characters. Like because the roster's huge, and there's a ton of unlock characters. You would just come back, and it's gone. 
Uh, yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of contributing factors why 3 it has not as good of word of mouth, and most of the people that love the gameplay of Soul Calibur just go back to 2. It's like it's like kind of what happened with Tekken 4 in this time frame where, where Tekken changed a lot, mm. and people just went back to Tekken Tag that, that were, mm. you know, consistently playing these games. So... People go back to two. They're like, two's just better, right? Gameplay-wise, it's just better, even though three looks really good. <coughs> and um, the 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 rectification, like, there, there's a there's a nice happy happy medium at the end of this story, and it's that Soul Calibur three was on PS two first. There was no arcade version, like immediately, from what I understand. Oh, yeah. So yeah. there was, I I think it's called Soul Calibur three, uh, arcade edition. Yes. Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition. So it gets an arcade port a little bit of time after the console port. And guess what? It's good. They actually fix a bunch of shit. And so the, the glitch things, and everything. The glitches, and I think they change a little bit of the speed. And some things like uh, that were clearly uh, in the negative reviews from publications and fans are addressed in this. So mm -hmm. apparently like there's a small group of folks that like playing Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition specifically, but you literally need a machine to do it. That's yeah, such a yeah. group. Yep, it's it, it's it's a it's a, a small clan. group at that point. Um, uh, I've never seen the arcade. Have you ever seen the arcade version? I've seen or? it once in arcade. I've seen one wow. Soul Calibur three arcade edition at the back of some sort of speed zone, like some go karting place, <laughs> and that was it, dude. Like it wasn't nearly as prominent as Soul Calibur two arcade. Mm. I'm I'm pretty sure you could find it in some arcade in Japan, like in the back, just chilling. Probably, yeah. Like the arcade, yeah, the arcade version. But uh, Evo should bring it to the uh, casual arcade section. If yeah, no shit. Sure. Yeah, can the, find the, one. Right? I'd love to play that. There's a, there's another cool uh, progression to this story, and it's that fans would go on and make a modified ISO of the PS2 version of the game, a disc image that changes a whole bunch of gameplay stuff and makes the Soul Calibur 3 PS2 game similar to Arcade Edition that fixes a whole bunch of the problems and that would be like you know a thing that's worked on for years I'm, and you can i'm search like, is that downloadable <laughs> do you know yes, is that it's, downloadable? Yes. No, it was it's been on eight way run for years it's called soul okay, caliber okay. three definitive and you can download it and it's yeah it's it's it plays like soul caliber three arcade edition oh, yeah. but you can actually okay, play it on a it. ps2 I found it. nice <clears throat> So, That's yeah, it, it comes around full circle. It essentially have to leave it up to fans and stuff like that to, to figure this shit out. But that's the the nice, sweet story, uh, sweet finality to this story is that eventually we got a really fun version of Soul Calibur 3 at home that isn't super fucked, you know? Yeah. So I, I assume that the HD versions of 1 and 2 maybe didn't sell all that well or, or whatever the reason may be. But it's like, why wouldn't Namco just try to do an HD port based on the arcade version of Soul Calibur 3 at that point. Like, why not? Did the first <clears throat> two not sell well? Like, yeah. Here's, yeah, here's what I understand. Like, Soul Calibur 1 didn't do super good when it came out on Xbox. I think it did okay. Soul Calibur 2 HD Online did not sell well. Really? And Because it, it it seemed like people, it did well. I guess in the FGC space, it did well because I remember seeing tournaments pop up for it. For like, sure. Even majors were having Soul Calibur 2, but I guess for the <clears throat> casual side... For it sure. just didn't click, huh? However, uh, I'd like to propose a thought. Soul Calibur games and Tekken games from this point forward, rat like Tekken 4 at this point, uh, aren't defined in popularity by the hardcore audience. Yeah. So what is Soul Calibur 2 HD Online missing? Don't say the Conquest mode. And it's not Conquest mode. What oh, it, the characters. It's, and, and Matt McMuscles should know exactly yeah. what it is because it, it's the it, it, whole reason he bought the game for GameCube. It's the, it's it's the characters. It, 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 Link. Link is gone. Oh, so the other two are there, but Link is it's gone? It's yeah. spawned in Aachi, but no Link. So everyone's like, who gives a shit? Everybody is like, who gives a fuck? I don't care. Uh, so so Calibur 2 HD Online does not sell super well, from what I... Can we can we think up a way to say no my, no buy, but we'll do it with Link? Uh, no Link, no my link. kink. <laughs> yeah. So uh, no no link it stinks no link it stink <laughs> yeah that's good <laughs> no, no, link, no, no link you stink. dink <laughs> give me my link you dink um, yeah no that that that's I mean e but even if uh, he wasn't in it like 
I'm still impressed they got Spawn, like because yeah. Hihachi is not, you know, Namco is Namco, so they could get whoever they wanted. Really, it's still my so preferred goes... way to play the game. I like HD online. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, the online is also than... a trash. I'll have to uh, throw nice. this out. The online is a absolute burning, heaping trash fire. It is some of the worst online I've ever played in a fighting game. It's like, fucking three balls. Worse. Top, top you... three. Uh, Tekken Are Five you... Dark Resurrection Online is what it is. Ooh. It's really bad. Fancy. <laughs> you should do that for the next Soul Calibur Legacy, but to play that version. Play the online silly. version. Oh, have have a I have show. videos, man. I have I have videos for me from like literally like 2013, 2014. Like this is kind of rough. <laughs> like well, just, I just... mean, yeah, I guess from Soul Calibur games online. Just like thinking about it. Every Soul Calibur community just uses Parsec to play the game. Yes. So yeah, and and started yeah. From this point forward, there's there's only like a couple of Soul Calibur games that people would have reasons to go back and play competitively. And yeah. to be real, the only two Soul Calibur games that are still actively played like to this day are Soul Calibur Two and Soul Calibur Six. Those are the ones yeah. that are played and. And not really, there's not many people that group together and you can obviously find like a big, you know, a big sizable collection of people that love Soul Calibur that will go back and just play three. Not really, man. Like you'll get some or four. Like, not really, man. I could still see some people playing five because five, some people do like that game a lot in terms of competitively, not so much yeah. all its content and its weird character roster. Yeah. Yeah. Five was pretty good because... I know that people like MOG, right? MOG had fought Soul Calibur 5 in their roster. And also, I think Soul Calibur 5 is kind of the first time where there was actually inter like Asia presence in the game for the FGC. Because mm. looking at all the results from Soul Calibur 4 and before, it was only America and France. France, yeah. But, but, but since Soul Calibur 5 to 6, Japan and, and Singapore, like all of, South, all of Asia... We're playing the game competitively. So, like, I think that's what really helped the community as well, too, in the FGC side. And I did a, a video on what happened to Soul Calibur Five, and, like, one of the things that kept coming up in, like, interviews and stuff is just, like, anytime a Namco person is being interviewed, they're saying eSports, eSports. E <laughs> yes. We want to set this up. <clears throat> and this, oh, was, this was the yeah. eSports era of Soul Calibur. But we're getting our head over ourselves. I kind of find the weirdest Soul Calibur game, actually, even more than three, is four. Yep. Four is bizarre in a lot of things. And and much more so than the obvious. Like this is where they started introducing systems where it's like, uh, I don't know, I don't know about this. This is, seems kind of like you need to think of this it's the weird armor thing yeah there's like yeah, a lethal hit armor. or something like that they call it that can lead to a super but it never actually happens <laughs> yeah, it, 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 they, 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 so justin just for comparative sake they add something pretty similar to pandora mode into yeah, 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 yeah. soul caliber 4 where you're just like never gonna see this shit outside of like one out of every a thousand matches uh they they add a a thing where you can get like literally a fatality against the other character like a finishing yeah, like a one -hit kill. cinematic cinematic one hit kill if you knock off certain parts of armor and do all this weird shit right um so it just never fucking happens because it, it, i i need to focus on his right shoulder in soul caliber where characters are just like doing this at all times yeah. get his right shoulder you stupid idiot like yeah it was so dumb so the, if, if you wanted we could just boil down Soul Calibur 4 really fast because it's the worst playing Soul Calibur game almost like there's a lot of busted shit in 3 but it still feels fun to play Soul Calibur mm -hmm. 4 actively feels bad like this game feels bad to play it, it, yeah. it they, they, they just make movement feel worse everything feels slower than Soul Calibur 1 uh, outside of like Soul Edge the whole reason to play this game is Yoda, Vader, and Starkiller. That's the whole, <laughs> there's a whole reason you want to play it. And yeah, at the time, I remember being hyped out of my fucking mind that like, holy shit, Just Darth Vader and Yoda, Soul Calibur. This is yeah. insane, dude. Like, it was on the same level as like Link in the GameCube version. That was, was mind-blowingly hyped. Yeah, because I think this was during the same time as actually episode two yeah, of Star Wars came we're, out we're, We were right around the prequel trilogy. Yeah. Because that's when we saw Yoda just kick, kick ass in that movie. And then you saw Yoda's actual moveset in Soul Calibur. You're like, oh, he does the flips as well, too. So yeah. I remember that. It was I, I, like, no, Revenge of the Sith was like 
2005. That was the last one. In my head, I'm like, oh, yeah, Soul Calibur uh, uh, 4 came out in 2006. came out in 2008. Oh really? So it's like yeah, it's it was like a bit after. A yeah, good for oh, a bit you. after. So yeah. I have a I have a question for you, Justin, since you're not as familiar with this. So Caliber Four also had console exclusive characters. There was one okay. character that was similar to um, Necrid that was on everything, and that was Star Killer. Star Killer was from Force Unleashed. He's this bald guy, generic dude. He's generic man with a lightsaber, and he uses force powers. Right? Cool. Yeah. Everybody gets okay. that Star Wars bullshit. Which console do you think Darth Vader was on? And which console do you think Yoda was on? Oh, I, I would assume Darth Vader would be on PlayStation and Yoda would be on Xbox. A bold assumption, Justin, and you're exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> so similar to before where like, hey, you know, Spawn's kind of green. He's on the Xbox. Yeah, we have a green little dude. He's going to be on Xbox. Same shit happened, man. So we had like the Xbox version and stuff like that. And we had no fucking Darth Vader. It was infuriating. For a while, because then for the, a while, yeah. This oh, is the incredible part of the story, because this will never happen again. Where there's like a deal, and then they're like, "Eh, who cares?" Like, or the deal, like there's a time limit. They're like console exclusives that are yep. timed. And I remember saying this like when it came out, and I'm like, "Darth Vader's on this fucking disc. Just give it to me, dude." <laughs> and yeah, 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 people literally like you know get into the data of the disc and find yeah. that Darth Vader is playable on the game on like the on the xbox version and yoda's also on the playstation so over time there's like an unlock or something like that that allows or a payable thing i can't remember what it was but eventually as like a year or two goes past we could finally play as the full roster on the xbox and playstation version but still stupid as shit when the game first comes out that we could not do that isn't this is it this or or is it five that had the really like six or seven really weird anime characters. It's this one. Or like it's this one. It's yeah. like Ashlot and Shazare Shazare or some weird shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's this one. This this is why it's so weird. Hey, let's have Star Wars characters. And let's have the let's most have a <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely, dude. It's so. What the hell are we doing? Like the most anime weeby <laughs> shit. Like you could possibly imagine on some other creative character sort of things. We should probably yeah, talk yeah. about creative character. But you know, yeah. Like in comparison to Darth Vader and Yoda, you know, and they're fighting some like, anime chick. These yeah. were characters that made Underbirth look like fucking oh, Mortal Kombat. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know this? I remember four now. I I remember four Under now Night. because. I, because I remember Hilde, and Hilde was banned in competition. Yeah, she was fucked up. She can uh, ring you out from anywhere. Yeah, but she's she so just, cool, Hilde. She's cool. She, she literally launched you once, and you, you don't get to play ever again. She yep. just rings you out after that. I remember that. Even with the directional influence, it didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't matter. She was fucked up. The game, again, like Soul Calibur 3, was just fucked for different reasons. Not like universal reasons. Some characters were just fucked in that game. So again, yeah. where does the competitive Soul Calibur community go? Back to 2. <laughs> just go back to 2 again. Um, so we got to talk about character creation because it's huge right yeah it, so caliber 3 yeah. was a game that had a lot of issues for sure but it also was like one of the most densely feature rich fighting games ever and it has an amazing character creator like you can make akuma in that game like it has a really sick character creator this character creator would quite literally go forth to tekken 5 as well um because i'm pretty sure soul caliber 3 uh predates Tekken 5 by like a little bit because the I systems a few months at least yeah by a few months because the systems are pretty similar and they they sort of share that between the two and this is the beginning of character creation being like a staple in Bandai Namco games and in, in Namco fighting games and it is pretty dope right we get it in Soul Calibur 4 as well it's sick create a soul now becomes a thing uh, no, you know, actually, Tekken 5 came out before Soul Calibur. Did it? Okay, they're, but they, they're probably close, In arcades. Right? And it, it, it's it's November 2004 for the arcade version in Japan, um, and then the console versions come out February of 2005, and then Soul Calibur 3 comes out for the PS2 October 2005. Gotcha. So, like, yeah, six, seven months. So, so, so Tekken 3 starts it, and Soul Calibur, like, continues it. Tekken, but here's the difference. Tekken 
Tekken 5's customization wasn't like creating a character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was like giving you a, a a palette of things to use per character, similar to like Virtual Fighter, because that's what they copied it from. Um, mm -hmm. But Soul Calibur 3 was like, you get to make a Soul Calibur character. You get to create them, right? And, and it was like, whoa, holy shit, from scratch, motherfucker. Uh, and yeah. that was that was sick that you can take them through like a story mode and stuff like that and, and then like unlock gear for them and shit. So this again, create a soul from Soul Calibur 3 becomes a defining staple of what people like about Soul Calibur. And if you don't have like a good create a soul, then fuck you. Like it was it, this is now a, a, a defining feature. I have a very good uh, character creator in um, Soul Calibur 5. That's the only thing I had when it came to Soul Calibur 5. Yep. Soul Calibur created... and... Yeah, I created Daigo. <laughs> <laughs> look, let me let I, 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 I check, Justin's like, why? Oh, check, this check, check out this image. Check out this image. Tell me, this was what Mad Cat's this? Daigo. I just put. Tell me, it don't look so good. <laughs> you know, he's got the shirt and everything. <laughs> yeah, I worked really hard on. He this. has the Devil Jin move set. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. I love how this credit on Event Hubs is like image created by E.G. Justin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like. I remember I created this, and I remember it was fe it was featured. I was like, "Wow, dude, that's the <laughs> sickest shit." <laughs> so yeah, we're kind of done with Soul Calibur Four. There's not much else to talk about it. The online is also butt shit. It's awful. Yeah, yeah, I it's remember that. Super bad. So there's the time. really like the, the I think the only thing that's kind of redeemable about it is the fact that it's a gorgeous game. It's yeah. beautiful. At the time, at, at the, the time, at the like time it was even the on looking. like this is this is the first game we're gonna get on like Xbox 360, PS3 beautiful game right absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful to look at but outside of that it's like nah man the, this this game plays like shit the only other thing i want to say about it is like i remember story-wise being really disappointed with this thing because it's like here's a new big bad out of nowhere he's an ancient king from a forgotten time with a throne named al al gol Oh, and the throne I, guy, right? Yeah. That's the thing that people remember him because he's one of the few characters that had a sick, like, finishing move blow. Yeah. Is where, yeah. like, his his throne would just drop out of the sky and he sits on it like he's a fucking Fist of the North Star character. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's sick. But, like, Algol, no, man. <laughs> this is one of the most generic bosses. Outside of that move, I'm just like, he's just a big asshole. Like, you know, that's kind of it. Like, yeah. Yeah. He comes back in one game, kind of, because what's what's after this? It's either before or no, it's after this. the The PSP one. Yeah, Broken Destiny is based on Soul Calibur Four. Uh, yeah, and this is the one that just got re released again. And the reason it's good, it got re released, is because this is the Soul Calibur that had Kratos as a guest character, like God yeah. of War Three oh. Kratos. Okay. I'm convinced this is the only reason it exists. Pretty much. Yeah, it, I think the PSP, right? Pretty yeah. much. I, I think, and it, it was a good reason to do it, although the, the re-release of the game has like a huge problem. Uh, versus mode was built into the game via ad hoc, so there wasn't even a way to play another character because it's on a PSP. It's just one controller, right? It's the same exact problem that Alpha... Why, why can't we just get Alpha 3 Max, bro? Just give us the most feature-rich version of Alpha 3, and it's like, because it doesn't have fucking like normal traditional verses. You have to like redesign the game to work with another person controlling the character because it's built into ad hoc, which is a term that probably doesn't even make any sense to anybody Justin's born. Justin's like, what are you talking no, 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 about? I, I know what ad hoc is from, from like okay, software sure. engineering, but I, I was so... But I didn't know that if you wanted to play two players, it didn't really... It doesn't exist. Like The, the doesn't only exist. way to play... Because think you, about you it, you're on a PSP, you dude. Played, yeah, you just had, you so you had to like connect with like infrared, right? Like yes, for yeah, the wireless signal connection to play versus yeah, mode. That's signal, it. Yeah. So what happens? That's what I did for for Dark Stalkers when it first came out. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Like that Dark yeah. Stalkers, um, the Power Stone collection, like all this yeah. shit is like ad hoc versus. So when they re release Broken Destiny and they're like, hey, you can play as Kratos, so it's like cool, sick. This should be great. And then you actually fire it up and you realize there's no way to fight another human. Yeah, it's just gone. There's also, there's also, of course, they didn't. There's no online either, so that's not an option. Also, there's no arcade mode either. So, 
So you're just fighting so, AI for for no reason you, then. And they have like you have two, like a Chronicle of yeah. Soul mode, all this kind of okay. shit. But yeah, the, that Chronicle of Soul mode is super lame because it's the slowest tutorial ever. Yeah, it has you do the same tutorials over and over and over again. I played it not too long ago and I was like, really? The the writing in between the cutscenes, like, oh, these are kind of fun, whatever. But like the you don't get to actual matches until like I don't know an hour or two. Is it that into bad? It. Yeah, I went through like an hour of it. it so long story, wasn't having fun. Long story short, like it has some uh, redeemable aspects to it. It is a really cool port. It actually looks pretty good for a PSP game because old Bandai Namco okay. PSP's games are pretty dope. Um, yeah. But the only reason to play it now is so that you can play Kratos and Soul Calibur. <clears throat> That's about it. And you're like, oh yeah, okay. Well, I can't do anything else with them. That's about it. You just you can just <laughs> fight AI. He doesn't even get an ending though, because there's no arcade mode. When you take him in the Chronicles of the Sword mode, it just thinks you're a generic warrior. It doesn't matter who yeah. you are. Yeah. That's all. It's brutal, dude. So and that, that's that's about the end of Soul Calibur 4. I don't think... We, oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. The oh, Wii game. Oh, no. The game oh, on Wii. Oh, yeah! The Wii version. Oh, God, bro. Hell, I yeah! I tried this game. Soul Calibur Legends? Yep. Is that what it's called? So yeah. So Soul Calibur Legend is is part of four or like story of four. Um, it's somewhere in between no, three like and four. It's like a prequel. So it happens. It has like Soul Calibur three designs from what I remember, mm -hmm. and so yeah. it's a low effort beat 'em up adventure RPG, sorta, on Wii. Yeah. And it's like visual novel style stuff for like cutscenes and like there's a big intro, right? But yeah. like all of the cutscenes are just portraits sliding in just it's going. clearly you're, low budget you're talking ivy's talking to leonardo da vinci and saying we need your cannons to kill the dragon and leonardo da vinci's like cool it's sick um <laughs> so it's stuff like that you have to you have to play it on a wii because you can't even emulate it well the game like for its control scheme because it's moving the wiimote up to do vertical attacks this shit yeah. moving it horizontal to do and like it's really hard to um accurately make a, a game like that work even on emulation and even though we emulation is really strong where you can do that for like a lot of motions it's still finicky so i played it on my i brought out my wii like a few months ago and i played through it again and max is right where it's really tedious and stuff the farther i got into it there's a, a, a big part is level design they're the most boring levels they're just corridors and corridors and corridors but when you start unlocking characters, you can switch between them. It also brings back guest characters because Namco is like, all right, we need to put a guest character in this. What do we do? Who's we don't want to pay. Yeah, we don't. Exactly. We don't we don't <laughs> we don't want to pay anyone oh, to get a guest the character. Oh, it's the goddamn Tales of Brestaria or whatever the heck it is. Oh, well, Symphonia, the Symphonia. I'll have you know. <laughs> the greatest. Right. This makes Final Fantasy VII look like trash. Lloyd. <laughs> wow. Lloyd is in it. Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd. I remember now. Okay. What was cool is because Lloyd is always done in like a chibi, sort of chibi, like cell shaded art style. So they had to like redesign him slightly to fit more soul caliber. So he's like slightly older. He's got more detail. I thought that was cool. And Namco didn't have to pay anybody because they already own Tales of Symphonia. Yeah. But I would love it if they had, if they had at least done an HD port for like 360 and PS3 and just had a traditional control scheme yeah. just because I've never seen the end of the game. What's the final boss? What are you even fighting? I would have liked to have at least seen that because you don't get very far into Soul Calibur Legends before you uh, get bored, unfortunately. But yeah, I still think it's, it's a it's a it's probably one of the weirdest spinoff games that we'll be talking about, except the one weird spinoff game we'll eventually talk about. <laughs> so uh, we're at Soul Calibur 5 now. I'm I'm kind of like sort of familiar with this one because this uh, this was the game that came out pretty much a few months after Ultimate Marvel 3. And I, mm -hmm. I, I was what was kind of full time content creation on YouTube uh, at this time yeah. between 2011, and 2012. So this is like my early days. And I have a lot of memory of like trying to establish myself as a content creator. And yeah, new Soul Calibur. I'm excited. Like, it's like, holy crap, this will, this will be great. This is going to be a fun game to, you know, make videos on. So I have a bit of experience with five and playing quite a bit of it online. Um, yeah. And nobody liked this game. 
Why? Long story short, because it quite literally got rid of all the characters you liked and replaced them with weird monkey guy and generic dude. And and it no, was the Talum girl. The Talum girl is the worst. Yeah. The blonde Talum girl. No, it's like we don't have uh, not Talum. Sorry, sorry. Taki. Taki. They took Taki out. Natsu. Yeah, they put so, Natsu, Natsu instead of Taki. So instead of Taki, who is um, who is like you know a Chun Li esque female character, like been around for ages, just it, like let's have a younger, more higher pitched, high energy, like teen version of. Them. So Sorry, yeah, this was no. Soul Calibur Five was the uh, ass- uh, how do I describe this? Essentially, the same thing they do in Mortal Kombat X, where they introduce the combat kids, yeah. right? So, but imagine if the combat kids replaced other characters we got rid of sub-zero and scorpion and now it's takeda and kung jin that's it that's what soul calibur 5 did soul calibur 5 got Mm. rid of main roster characters that have been around forever and they're like these are the new characters instead the only ones offhand i I think we can look this up is mitsurugi stayed around mitsurugi stayed stayed, ivy stayed around ivy stayed around because namco wasn't completely insane yeah, Siegfried Bro, stayed we, around. Like there was there gotta, was a few. Uh but like what about Kalik, Kalik got and re- Zhang Hua. Yeah, Shang Shua was there. Uh Kalik got replaced by like a monkey boy. There was there was a healthy chunk of the roster that was now Siba that was a bit Siba that was gone. So ultimately, like in in my opinion, this is when Soul Calibur dies. The Soul Calibur 5 and and this choice alone. Uh, is the beginning of the end for the entire franchise, and it never actually recovers from this, in in my personal opinion. But, you know, gameplay-wise, <laughs> the game's kind of interesting. It adds, like, EX moves to the game. Um, and supers, right? Yeah, it has, like... They it did has better there. supers in here. The, there is some... The Soul Calibur now has meter, so it's getting away from the purity of what Soul Calibur is. It's like a weapons and swords fighting game. Now, now we're getting, like, a bunch of crazy... Sh- shit on top of it parrying is like yeah. you know costs shit now oh uh, that's right i remember this yeah. being a huge for a lot of people that enjoy soul caliber parrying is really fun in soul caliber because you can do it whenever now that's gone dude now it's like now it costs mm-hmm. meter or some shit i can't remember it so, was um it was it was it cost a bit of meter like i think like half but if you successfully parry yeah you, you got it back turned up you turned the opponent's guard straight from green to yellow yeah so if it was, you yeah, parry yeah. successfully twice, they're automatically in red. They made parries like very mechanically intertwined with all the rest of the shit. So the yeah. armor breaking stuff and, you know, all that thing. But like yeah. gameplay wise, I remember liking it a bit more than four. Oh, yeah. Like it's it's four, better than four. Yeah. What's not better than four is having one, two, actually four s- character slots taken up by... The human dung heap that is Patrolicus. Oh my pa- god. Patrolicus Alpha, then Fira, and then Fira Omega. So basically two violent versions of two other not great characters. Yeah. Like this this was if you care about the characters and like lore a little bit, like the rosters, like these are some of the worst additions I've ever seen. Like I'm not sure if they're made to be unlikable, but they're both unlikable to me. Like Patrolicus mm-hmm. is especially egregious. I, I did a story playthrough of the game, um, you know, when we were making videos back in 2012, and it was hilarity. It was like the cringiest, like worst shit ever. It was so bad. <laughs> uh, it, painfully bad, right? And it, and it hurt as well because Patrolicus was stealing the moveset of Setska, essentially deleting yeah. Setska and making it this dickhead. Uh, and then Pira was stealing the moveset set of either Cassandra or Sophidia, right? And 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 then, you know, that character's now gone. It's like, mm-hmm. my God, dude, they fucked this whole thing up so bad. But yeah. the two new characters, Viola, who's the magic user with the ball, she's cool. She's cool. Yeah, Vi- Viola and... is is pretty sick. She's essentially like Minot, which is why we all called yeah. Minot Viola when she first came yeah. out. She's got a very cool moveset, and she's really good in the game. Yeah, and, and Zve, Zvi, guy, about... guy with guy, Forgot... guy with wolf stand. Yeah, yeah, he's essentially uh, uh, unknown from Tekken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but That's he's like but him. he's an edgy looking uh, JoJo guy. So mm. yeah, okay. he's okay. He's all right. Viola, Viola, Viola was the best, though. 
Y'all love a yeah. school. No, no, no. no. The, the best was the greatest Soul Calibur character of all time, Ezio Auditore di Firenze. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought that, like, to me, this was like, this is the fucking goat guest character. Is it? Because uh, yes, because I was still so into Assassin's Creed at the okay. time. I was yeah. like, oh, and Ezio is like my favorite character of that universe. I was like, oh, this is so cool. Would have been cooler if he was like you know, a couple of years earlier because the Ezio games were almost... It did feel like, late. It, it did, did feel, feel like Assassin's Creed was kind of... like kind of People were kind of done because 3 was already wrong. out and, like, the yeah. story was completed or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it, it, so, was all, it was all it was all downhill, but... Yeah. <laughs> I, he's so cool because A, gun. Yeah. B, hidden blade. And then just... I, I thought he was a great character in that, but it was a little late to the party. I will readily so it's, admit that. It's funny because the... This I, I I feel like Jerry and or yeah. Geralt. I feel like Geralt and Ezio are like perfect guest characters for Soul Calibur. Like thematically fit, fit in really well. perfect. But do they hold a candle to Link or like Darth Vader? I don't think they come close at no, all in no, terms of no appeal, way. dude. I like I think I think tough. we're really far off. Like something has happened here. We we are not in the same bountiful, you know, bountiful place we were before. So uh, essentially, you're hoping that the casual draw of the game is that Ezio and its Assassin's Creed fans will bring people in the same way that you know Jerry's Witcher yeah. fans will. It doesn't work. <laughs> Long story tough. short, it doesn't work. I, I think it would have been far more potent if it was like the game had released somehow in 2010. Maybe. That's like when, that's when only the second Ezio game was out and that was like the really, really good one, whatever. It had a big online community because it had like multiplayer, blah, blah, blah. Um, one huge regret, I think I might have talked about this when we we're talking about guest characters, is that like even though you had the parts to make uh, fashion him, Guts from not being in this game, Guts from Berserk, is like one of the had all those weird anime and manga characters in in four and just no guts, dude. Like, <sighs> I, so 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 we're talking about like like at this point it's Soul Calibur guest disappointments, and then later on in Soul Calibur six there's some genuinely really cool ones. There's some good ones. Mm -hmm. Um, but I could not believe we didn't get a FromSoft yeah. character. Uh, Bloodborne. I, how did we not get a Bloodborne Hunter in a PlayStation version? How do we not get Artorias or some shit? Namco owns Namco it. Namco literally owns it. <laughs> uh, I, I was I was mind blown. It felt like the easiest because the Souls games were like the biggest shit ever when Soul Calibur Six was coming out, and somehow we don't get a, a we don't get a Souls character in in Soul Calibur. It's actually perfect, and it would. I feel like those games are naturally kind of hard and kind of fighting gamey in many ways, and they kind of yeah. b benefit themselves to Soul Calibur a bit more and share the audience a lot more than super basic combat The Witcher games, which are pretty much just RPGs, and the same thing applies mm -hmm. to Assassin's Creed. They're not really like combat games for the most part. There's like yeah, other I, stuff to them. Zelda's they're, they're different. All... Like Zelda's a combat game, you know? That's why yeah. that works so well. They're all beholden by their combat, especially in Assassin's Creed, where it's a lot of automatic animations yeah. kicking in because you're just assassinating people. If Soul Calibur VI had been like a big 10 year long success story, like been like pumping out DLC ever since then, we'd be getting Godfrey from Elden Ring. Yeah. For sure. Like having both his forms or or whatever it may be, like a, a, a fucking a mech from Armored Core. Yeah. It would have made its, made its way in somehow. And like, unfortunately, that's that's not the case. But you think you think we're good on five, Justin? Any other questions on five? But this is the one you said you played a bit, right? Well, yeah, I played a bit because it was like at MOG and I think it was it was also at Evo one year as it was well. At Evo. In, yeah, a lot of Japanese players were were playing it then. I think someone from Japan actually did win uh, for Soul Calibur Five. So I think that's when the game got more light in terms of like just I guess the NA and EU audience. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, and there I was, was a big definitely Viola, some. Yeah. There's definitely some big JP players for Soul Calibur Two back in the day because yeah. I remember like the Soul Calibur Two finals when they were in Paris and stuff. Definitely had some Japanese representation, but mm, yeah, we okay. were we were in an era in like 2012 when esports started to like establish itself as being a thing, and yeah. Bandai Namco was shoving Soul Calibur to the forefront. So there was like prize pools and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, I remember that. Like. And like story wise, the only thing I really remember about this is that it Tekken three'd it, where it takes place like fifteen years after the last yeah. game, and like that's why so many characters have been replaced. So and many new younger characters. 
Yeah, right? Siegfried yeah, was just... was older in this. Yeah, so was Mitsurugi. They were like so, gray bearded. So Fidia was fifteen years older, but Nanako's like, yeah, just, just the same character. The only Holy thing that aged was her chest. It just got bigger. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. My favorite meme image of Soul Calibur is like back on a forum back in the day. It was like people taking portraits of all the Soul Calibur women. And the one for Sophidia is the most hilarious one. Because in like, I think it's Soul Cal 2, where it's yeah. like her bust gets so big. And then in 5, I think, 5 or 4, they show a picture of her. And it's this one picture of her. Max, do you know this picture where she's like looking up at the sky, but she has two tears on either yes. side of her like and it's like someone like someone's commentary on the picture is like her back is breaking because she's in pain yeah she's in pain <laughs> That's <just> so <laughs> yeah she now is carrying like two actual humans on her chest they're yeah, so exactly. big oh, uh good times so we don't need to talk much more about five it's okay creative souls okay you know you can make a lot of characters with it it's yeah it's it is pretty soul. cool this is the i from what i understand like the last best create a soul um I think this one has a lot of customization parts in the same way that Tekken six was the last best create a character for uh, Tekken that had the most customization. There was just so much mm -hmm. stuff you can customize from this point. Bandai Namco does like the same shit. By the time we get Tekken seven and Soul Calibur six, uh, they don't translate all the customization parts from the previous games. Again, we only get mm -hmm. some. So the customization in Tekken seven and Soul Calibur uh, 6, from what I remember, just isn't as bountiful. You can't do as much. So they make they just give you more tools, but less stuff. Yeah. So, mm. um, I love Soul Calibur 6, man. Like, the, the, here's, so what's the, uh, if you didn't play it, Justin, you didn't play a lot of Soul Calibur 6? No. They put straight up fucking combos in this game. They're like, okay, so we have this unique counter hit system. Where if you uh, counter somebody, it causes this giant animation that boom, and they're smack like a, back. Like a counter. Like it's a counter like type Mortal Kombat 11. What do they call them? Fatal, not fatal blows. Um, you know when like you crushing land. Blows. Crushing, crushing, crushing blows. Crushing blows. It's literally right. crushing blows where it's like you, you blow this one part up. And now it's going to send the enemy into a super unique juggle state that gives you the ability to do not a pre-can combo, but like a specific combo. Uh, yeah. And if you're at the corner, it changes like so. Oh, God, like now, you know, shit get like like five to on some characters, like 15 hit combos. So mm -hmm. these big, very situational moments of just like, boom, and all of a sudden, damn, now you're getting rewarded like crazy. So to yeah. me, it's like it's super fun. Like I'd love to go back and show you some online matches of like Siegfried wall combos, but they have like seven or eight steps to them to get them to bounce off and then bounce back in and bounce off and back in and you oh, sidestep and throw them back over. It looks insane. It's so much fun, bro. So they added they added like more like like kind of like those Tekken wall, re wall bounce combos. Oh, for sure. Like well. like intentionally, and even like mm -hmm. mid screen combos where they have like chunks, like three hits, like a launcher, a spike, and then an OTG like type of shit. So there's there's actual like legit big combos now instead of just like maxing out the juggle system. Okay. Um, and it makes oh. the game look pretty crazy. The problem is this mechanic called reversal edge. And I'm sure you Matt will tell you about reversal edge. <laughs> Why it, you sigh like that? Because it's one of those like divisive things, especially from people that came out from Soul Calibur Five because it didn't have anything close to like this. But this yeah. is just basically a guessing game. It's a casual bait you, guessing game. Oh, it's, it's a, a casual rock, paper scissors type yes. of yes. thing. Yes, it looks so fucking cool. Yeah, but it most but after, matches just after twenty times. Yeah, exactly. you're done. So yeah. so long story short, it's a big parry state, like a character auto parry state. And if you commit yeah. to it, it clashes and you enter RPS mode and you just choose. Oh, so wow. at launch, it kind of sucks. There's like yeah. no way to escape it. Eventually, like a year down the line, they rework the way it, the way it works and you don't okay. see it happen nearly as much. So it, it actually gets good later on. I can say personally from a lot of people that like Soul Calibur 4, this was the game that introduced like meter shit. Right, you get literally get uh, instinct mode. Right, you get um, V trigger activation in this game. Mm -hmm. So you can either do a super or you can do V trigger. That gives you a buffed out version of your character. Pretty much heat mm -hmm. mode. This game just has heat yeah. mode, um, yeah. and that's cool. But it's getting like very not Soul Calibur because now we have like metered moves and shit, uh, even yeah. more than Soul Calibur Five. And then you also get this auto parry shit. So it's just getting very far away from the purity of Soul Calibur. 
Um, mm. But mechanically, the game's pretty fun. Eventually, this stuff gets ironed out, and it, the game, like, competitively becomes super sick. This is arguably, like, the best competitive Soul Calibur. Outside of, like, ridiculously unbalanced kind of crazy Soul Calibur 2. Arguably the best competitive Soul Calibur game. It's really yeah. fun to watch. And it's, it's, it's equally fun to play now. The problem is they lose a lot of casuals at the start. Yeah. So it starts oh, off kind of like like kind of like cross Tekken type of thing. A little bit. Where it has like kind of yeah. like a big thunderous beginning. It and I, I'll say personally, it also doesn't help. It looks like Soul Calibur Five. Like, if we're gonna be real, it's painfully clear the game was made on a kind of a meager budget. And as yeah. we talked to Okubo over the years, who's the director of the game, the lead producer, we kind of learned that about it, that they didn't have much to work with. And the, but the guy just loved Soul Calibur, so we wanted it to come back in some way. Uh, yeah. Weirdly enough, we're back to Soul Calibur 1 for some reason. Yeah, timeline-wise. It, it, yeah. just, it, it just never is, makes sense with timeline, huh? It, was it, there a reason for I it? Was it like Zasalamel created some there's shit? There's definitely some time travel shit at some uh, point or m other universe shit. But if you, if you look at the majority of the roster, they're essentially their Soul Calibur 1 designs with like updated. Like Mitsurugi looks like Soul Calibur 1 Mitsurugi, but he's like updated, you know? So yeah. a, a lot of the game is kind of like going back to Soul Calibur 1, which is where I think this game has a huge misstep. It's called Soul Calibur Six. Six, exactly. I was just gonna say, and, and and it's and it feels like wait a minute, but we're we're essentially rebooting the franchise. Like after Soul Calibur Five, the last thing we wanted to give the impression of is like, hey, everyone that like, remember hating Soul Calibur Five, well, here's the follow up mm. to that game you hated. Let's hope you hate it less. Instead of rebooting the franchise and giving everyone like a new starting point to hopefully like, okay, we're going to wipe our hands clean of Soul Calibur 5 because everyone fucking hated this game. Yeah. Here's a new Soul Calibur. This is brand new Soul Calibur. So to me, that was always a marketing misstep that I felt the, the franchise should have like restarted over. And, and it's much more confusing than like, say, Street Fighter 4, because it's not a new chapter just called Street Fighter 4 and it's placed somewhere in the timeline. It's like a remake reboot of Soul Calibur 1 and 2. But here's a couple of characters from 3. Yeah. And other ones. So like if you care about this stuff like or you just want to know what the hell's going on, like it's not easy to be like what exactly is this? I think they should have just called it Soul Calibur. Yeah. 20 yeah. 2018 or 2017 yeah. whenever it came out. Cuz Mortal Kombat's done that like what? Twice? We're, we're, we're already done remaking I mean, all the old MK games now. Yeah, we're already there. Okay. So, so yeah, Soul Calibur VI <clears throat> um, also doesn't have the best guest character, in my opinion, at the start. Um, I think Jerry's okay, and he's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong. Like, a super, way more fun than Ezio was, even, you know, if we're talking about cool gun shit. If you've never actually played, uh, if you've ever actually never played Jerry of the River, in Soul Calibur 6, he's genuinely a super fun character, and he's pretty good in the game, too. Um, yeah. But it was the wrong starting guest character. He was, like, front of the box. I'm traveling through portals and shit and meeting people. He's doing all his Witcher stuff. Dude, sometime after the game comes out, 2B comes into Soul Calibur. And, and like, it's like, holy shit. The, yeah, that's The hype. internet kind of loses their mind because at this point, Nier is, like... New still really hot and new yeah. right yeah. within, within no, like a year and, still popping. and and it's still an unexpected choice because it's not jerry of the river where it's like i kind of fit in yeah it's, it's sort of expected and this is just like unexpected she's and out just there like, she's just out there and unfortunately it's like for me after that there's like one other character i'm like that's pretty cool but then the dlc is kind of underwhelming after that point so now we have to get to the disappointing parts of the game um, which is the roster. It, like I said, the starting roster of Soul Calibur 6 had less characters than Soul Calibur 1. It was the smallest yeah. starting roster in a Soul Calibur game ever, which is where the budget starts to become very obvious. I, also, the game visually kind of looks like, like an up -res Soul Calibur 5. Like we're talking mm -hmm. like lighting and graphics and stuff. There's some better stuff here and there, but it doesn't visually look that much better than its predecessor. So the, the huge draw of Soul Calibur is obviously visuals, right? The, the series is just based on the fact that the graphics in these games yeah. are amazing, bro. It does not immediately come across, I have to buy this game because it's so pretty. It does not elicit those feelings 
at all. So we're losing a lot of casuals based on that. Um, and yeah, we would have to wait for DLC characters to eventually show up. I like a lot of the new characters in this game. I really like um, Grow. Grow. Grow's playstyle is kind of amazing. He's the, he's like a guy from Switzerland or something like that. That's the most anime pro tag you've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, but he is. He's really fun. He's a he's a dual bladed stance character that has like a twin twin blade that he can split yeah. it up and do sta oh my god he's so much fun, um and that's what I kind of love about Soul Calibur six personally like these are the most jacked versions of these characters ever bro mm -hmm. like and then they get an instinct mode they get like a soul charge mode that makes them super buff all of a sudden where they get even more stuff it's the equivalent of Tekken 8 right where now you're just going to get your characters that you've always loved now they can do the most things they've ever had and now you have a mode that puts them on top of that getting even more crazy buff shit so to me i love that like as you play more of the game, every character just feels like super juiced and it it's very fun. It's just like, you know, we're, we're putting everything into this sort of kind of game. Before we started recording, Max, I was telling Justin, it's like, man, I think they would be really well served by re-releasing this to take advantage of PS5 and Xbox series. Like, it, it, would rollback netcode even be possible to re-put in there with Namco? I don't know, but just have all the DLC put in there and just release it, just see how it does. Yeah, I, I think, but and because the game got shut down, the thing, the game got shut down like a couple years ago before Okubo uh, left. And 2020? I, yeah, something like 2021, maybe even 2022. Um, Because we got a lot of DLC in this game. Like it got supported for a very long time. And to be real, it sold pretty good. Like 2 million, something over like Over 2 million units. Yeah, it sold yeah. pretty good. But it didn't sell good enough. Long story short, these are big companies with big expectations, and uh, the game did not hit a level of sales that would continue. So the the sad story of Soul Calibur Six, which is eventually now the end of Soul Calibur as a franchise, was that Okubo had told us personally that he chose to take on this franchise because he liked it, right? And he had already been working on Tekken Seven and other big franchises, but he to chose to split off. He's like, I want to do Soul Calibur. I love this game. So he made Soul Calibur 6. Um, but he essentially bet his career at Bandai Namco on it. Yes, and he, he I, said, yeah, if this he, game if this game does not do well, uh, I will be leaving like Bandai Namco. It was essentially ultimatum. So it it sells okay. Like it does pretty good, but compared to most fighting games, it sells okay. Compared yeah. to Tekken 7, which I think at that point it sold like 8 million at yeah. that point in time. Now yeah, Tekken 7 10, was selling but... super well. Uh, or had begun selling super well. So we learned like a few years later, how Maru is DLC, you know, 2B, all these characters eventually happen. They remake Huang into a Bloodborne character for some reason. Um, and Setsuka came back. Setsuka came back. Yeah, she's like the last character, I think. Oh, so, think so, so. They, added a they added a bunch it's of a big, DLC characters. Oh, it's a big yeah. game. Yeah, by the time they're done, it's a very big game. However, it's like people 29 are... 29 characters by the end of it, I think. People are kind of turned off that the roster started off small and everything was DLC. That mm. that ends up also being a little bit of a uh, that ends up being Money a little hungry. bit of a, a a kind of like yeah. oh this this stings a little bit for a lot yeah. of the casual audience. Uh, but it definitely has its followers, and you know it it is still a very well regarded competitive game. Like there's a yeah. huge not huge, but there's a really big Soul Calibur Six scene. You know, the oh, people yeah, that play sure. the shit Parsec out of this game. Everything like that. Yeah. Uh, the sad part of the story is that a few years back, um, Okubo left Bandai Namco and also announced that Soul Calibur 6 was like done. Oh. And it was like, uh oh, it didn't sell enough. Like, oh yeah. shit. It, it's essentially the death of the franchise. Now, when Harad is asked about Soul Calibur, he's like, ask me again in 10 years type of shit. Uh. Where yeah. the, the franchise, in terms of, like, its performance does not impress the higher-ups at Bandai Namco enough to be like, okay, so we need new higher-ups, so you can ask me again in 10 years. So, you say that, and I was, as I was looking through the game's credits, uh, a few of them, Harada was, like, a producer and sometimes a director on, like, up until Soul Calibur 4. Yep. Yep. And then after 5, like, he drops off and probably focuses on Tekken. Yeah, Harada so has a huge still... involvement in Soul Calibur, yeah. He can still do it if the opportunity presents itself. Like if he, like, you know, really thinks he like uh, they can bring the franchise back in a big way with like a big idea or whatever it is. For sure. So it's like hope isn't completely lost, but I don't see Namco like higher ups being like, 
yeah, stop making Tekken. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So at this at this point, Soul Calibur reaches Marvel versus Capcom status where, mm. you know, you, you, you had these people that were willing to champion this stuff for a while and then they did it and it and even MVCI sold OK, but not enough and caused too much ire. Right. It was too much of a pain in the ass. So now yeah. the the follow up people are just like, we don't want to we don't want to deal with that shit. We just sorry, man. Like it, it just isn't worth the, the headache for the for the return not being guaranteed right so we enter this game where it's like yeah a couple of the most painful game franchises out there in my opinion are marvel versus capcom and soul Calibur because they just weren't treated well they just didn't get the the treatment that we wanted them to sort of had soul Calibur 6 did get a pretty decent treatment but it was always a low budget ass game that was just mm -hmm. built on the assets of the previous game and looks a little better and the online was also bad okubo also talked about the online later before the game died and kind of just said I would love to do a rollback netcode in this game, but we don't have the budget. <laughs> like we just we don't have the money for it. And it's either like do DLC characters or or fix the online yeah. or we're yeah. done. And he, he if if they even if they added rollback to Soul Calibur, that would not have fixed anything, man. It would not have brought people back in. You Casually, know. no, probably still not. Nope. So like it. That's the sad story of Soul Calibur at the end of all of this stuff is that six is actually a great game now. It's really good, but it just never grabbed the enough of an audience to continue. And like, aside from some DLC characters, it didn't like get a big new mode or like a feature or anything like that. It was just, it was create a soul parts. I think that was like always included in the roadmap, yeah. like in between characters or with a character It'd be like, Oh, there's some parts from this. Or I think there was like Tekken parts. Like you could here's Hey Hachi's hair or the, you know, stuff little like that. little bits like that yeah they yeah. they took away the um the Creative Soul Devil Jin which was in Soul Calibur uh, five so yeah, that move set was gone so please buy Soul Calibur Broken Destiny on PS <laughs> PS five yeah that was weird it. man that was it was pretty wild to me in like 2023 to see the official Soul Calibur account tweeting to buy a Soul Calibur game I was like holy shit this is weird. Uh, so anyway, that's that leaves an iota of excitement there, at least. Something. Uh, yeah, Justin, will you right. be picking up? Will you be playing Soul Calibur Six again to see where it was to see what you missed? It, it's he, your special I, homework. I feel like the problem is, like, like, like you mentioned earlier, if it came back now at a rollback, then hundred percent I would have bought it, right? And I feel like a lot of people will probably buy it as well because we're in this fighting game like golden age era where fighting game is hot and everything. I think if if, if a Soul Calibur like just come back not even a new game but just like hey we we got it we we we're we bring we're bringing this port back check this game out it's kind of like how jojos when ban and amco released jojos oh, yeah. so many people so many people bought jojos even yeah. though the netcode was terrible <laughs> um but people bought it anyway i feel like it would be the same thing with soul caliber yeah i think so so we have to think now we have all these years some 25 plus to almost 30 years of soul caliber um what is the best Soul Calibur game in your guys' personal opinions? What's like the ultimate one that that resides well, in your personal in your personal delight? Well, what I, I guess I guess I'll go first because you know since Justin hasn't played like a ton of them, maybe you need like a second to think. I don't know, but I want to say I want to say it's still Soul Calibur two. Yeah, but. I have better memories also of playing Soul Calibur 1 in the arcades. Sure. Like, I knew a cast of characters in my arcade mm. that would play, like, old businessmen and, like, a guy in a cowboy old hat. Old businessmen, yes. I think I've talked about guy in a cowboy hat before. I don't know his name, but God bless him. Um, so I have really good memories of that. Soul Blade, not so much. Like I said, no one really played it. And playing Edge Master mode, and or, or I think that's what it was called, Soul Calibur 2. Like, that's still the highlight. The only thing we're really missing with Soul Calibur is like an anime, like an anime movie where yeah. there was a shower scene. That never happened. A shower scene never <laughs> happened. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say, I, I would say, Justin, how do you feel? I would say for me, it would probably be just Soul Calibur 2, just because that's what I'm familiar with from the arcade. And even recently, last year, when I went to a tournament and they had like arcade setups, um, I played with a few games of Soul Calibur 2 with my friend. So, yeah, I would say that one because I still remember how to play that game. 
Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and I think Soul Calibur 2 clearly is at the top of my, my personal regard as well. The game's just too much fun. It's like the yeah. fastest, most responsive, like, fighting game Bandai Namco has ever made. Um, I'm trying to think of, like, in the same respect, we gotta, we gotta bring this around, we can't end on happiness. What's the worst one? And if, if I was to personally say which one hurts me Hard. the most as, like, a hardcore Soul Calibur fan, I will never forgive Soul Calibur 5. <laughs> I, I think that game and its choices are what set Soul Calibur 6 up to fail or not do as good as it did because 6 sold better than 5. It did. But the damage 5 did to the franchise, I think, was substantial. So I, I really like there's parts of the game that can be fun, but I really am like angry towards it, you know? For me, it's a toss up between 4 and 5. I like some things in 4, like some things in 5. It. Given your reasoning, it yeah, it's it's still got to be five because yeah, it's the lowest selling. It, it but it's still like sad. You saw that like um that uh, sales like a uh, breakdown of Tekken recently, right? Yeah, that was going around Twitter, and everyone's mm -hmm. really sad that Tekken Tag Two is like the lowest, like sold worse than Tekken One. Yeah, right? sold worse wow, than Tekken One, sold crazy. worse than Tekken Four. Yep. Right, yeah. but it's still like a good game with like tons of features and shitloads of characters and stuff. For sure. And like five, I even though it was kind of not early in the Xbox 360, it was like 12, uh, uh, 2012 or whatever. I feel like if that got more DLC or or something, it had very few, like it had like two characters or something, mm -hmm. like DLC uh, characters or Tekken something. Tag? Like it was, no, uh, sorry, uh, Soul Calibur Five. Oh yeah, Soul Calibur Five. yeah. Yeah, it, 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 like, it got a few DLC characters and mostly the things that got that cost money were character customization parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put a lot of and, that into that game. And it, it like it's almost like Soul Calibur Five had the most potential to like be improved upon, and and maybe uh, correct some mistakes and like bring it back a little bit and sell more. And it just didn't like they just didn't support it. So like it's five, but at the end of the day, the real villains here are like whoever assigns the budgets yep. to Soul Calibur games. Oh, so yeah, it's yeah. Not like Nam It's not like Namco was doing bad. It's not like you know, especially for Soul Calibur Six. Like all these Souls games that are not Soul Calibur, all these from software games, all selling millions and millions of copies. Yep. I know money gets divvied out to different depart uh, apartment uh, apartments, departments like the fighting game like department, and like they just didn't get it. Like it all goes towards Tekken. No hate on Tekken, gotta put it there. But like the last two being hamstrung by by paltry budgets is like yeah the most tragic thing. Justin, which so, one? So yeah, that's which... the end of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, Justin, no, what was your least favorite? I wouldn't even really know because <laughs> I only played Soul Calibur 2 and Soul Calibur 5. Yeah. And I, I like both of them because, you know, Viola was such a cool character. Um, she was also the character that every, like, Capcom guy played because she had all these crazy combos and strings. Yeah. So I guess from all this whole conversation... I would say probably Soul Calibur three, because then that was the one that kind of took took uh just just made Evo said we're stop we're gonna not we're not gonna have Soul Calibur Evo for a very long time because of the glitch. Yep. But I felt like that was kind of unfortunate because I like watching Soul Calibur two um, during like Evo two thousand two to Evo two thousand three, just like watching France and and USA go at it. That was really fun, and it's it kind of sucks that Soul Calibur three didn't recover from that. Yeah, it's it's a it's a funny comparison because I think Justin will relate to this with with a different franchise. Um, you have these two mega Japanese conglomerates that have some of the biggest fighting game franchises in the world, Capcom and and Namco, right? And they have their respective champions. It's Street Fighter and Tekken, and yeah. those games always get like second, third, fourth chances to to live and exist, and you know they'll always be carried because they are their mega franchises. However, mm -hmm. at Namco and Capcom, they have their secondary game. That's like their mm -hmm. big secondary game. Capcom's was Marvel vs. Capcom, and Namco's was Soul Calibur. And I think it's insanely hilarious and tragic that they treated their secondary games almost identically, where they just don't get the love and support they really need. They, they have a couple of hilarious missteps and really bad decisions that lead the franchise to eventual death. That is just like, dude, if we just got some people that like really 
really gave a shit and some people that had a little bit of confidence in this we would have been fine but for some yeah. reason it was always treated as like the second you know the the second to third stepson of their main hero franchise and never actually gets you know the the attention that we all hope it would it yeah like so sad we, we'd be you know singing the praises of soul caliber right now saying like oh this current game is doing really well and the franchise has never been bigger and we can all put that down to one decision that namco didn't make which was to put necrid in five and six nailed it could have could have saved it <laughs> green skin mcweirdo that's all we needed todd you left us todd you <laughs> piece no, of not shit like this, todd. <laughs> come on